I'm not going to sing the Jeopardy music, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karanda, and I make websites for a living. And I'm, I'm married to a nurse, and uh, when I surf the web, sometimes I sound a lot like my wife when we're watching Grey's Anatomy. She's always yelling at the screen of everything they're doing wrong. Um, don't ever shock someone if they're in asystole. I don't know what that means, but... Um, <laughs> I have ideas about how to make the web better, and it starts with asking the right questions. Um, so this works not just for journalists, but it's a great place to start when you're trying to start a new web project. So like, ask these questions, who, why, what, when, where. So who's your site for? It's not for you, it's for your users. Uh, the decisions that you make about uh, how your site works and how it looks should be based on what's gonna make it easiest for your users to do what they need to do and find the information that they need. So why do you even need a website? I mean, do you want people to help share your ideas? Uh, do you want to sell things online? Do you want to get people to your place of business? Uh, the answers to those questions are going to really help you because those are the things that you should make really easy to do on your site, like really, really easy. So if you ask most people what's the first thing you need for a website, they probably say, a designer. But um, if you have a really pretty design and no content, like what good does that do anybody? Um, your design should be driven by your content. You know, people write books and then they design the book cover, so. Um, your site needs a place to live. <coughs> uh, you need a domain name, and it should be kind of easy to remember and give some people some clue about your business. Um, you need a hosting company that's uh, secure, reliable, and has great customer service, not GoDaddy. Um, <coughs> if you have any sort of hard deadline, if you've got a conference coming up or some kind of product launch, some websites literally take years to build, so. Do not wait till the last minute to start planning and implementing your site. All right, so you have everything together, and now a designer is probably going to make a Photoshop design, which is flat, and then a developer is going to make that into an actual interactive website. Between those two processes, you should not get hung up on pixels, whether your interactive living website matches your flat design perfectly. You should actually worry about whether it looks good and works well on lots of devices, because people are going to be looking at it on lots of devices. Uh, if it's 2013 and you're making a site and it's not uh, responsive, you better have a really good reason. Um, what does that mean, responsive? It means that your layout changes based on the size of the screen. And the smaller the screen, the more you have to prioritize your information. And that's actually a really good uh, exercise for your site at any screen size. So I spent 10 minutes one time trying to figure out if what, how late my local coffee shop was open. It was on my phone, trying to find the information, couldn't do it. Gave up, went to the coffee shop, found a paper sign on the door saying, we're closed early for winter. That was not a good user experience, <laughs> okay? And even on a desktop, desktop size screen, uh, if you can't find what you're looking for, you have to go in two or three clicks to find what you're looking for, people are probably just gonna go find your competition and then go there. Uh, on the opposite end, don't try to cram every little thing on the home page. That's why we have different pages. It's the internet, it's infinite. Um, if I see a site like this that's super busy, I'm probably gonna send it to readability to get rid of all that clutter, or I'm just gonna leave and go somewhere else. Don't surprise your users, okay? Nobody wants to be in their work meeting and then suddenly have to hunt through 20 tabs to find the restaurant that's playing mood music, okay? Let us make that decision. Musicians, that means you too. If we wanna hear your stuff, we will click play. Just leave the user in control. Social media is huge, right? Um, but if you're not huge into social media, don't put it on your website. It looks like a graveyard. It's very sad. Um, <laughs> if that's something that's important to your business and you want to start using it, then hire someone to teach you how to do it or hire someone to do it for you. Um, can someone in the back read this slide for me? No? Yeah, it's kind of small. Don't go through all the trouble to make a website and then make the text too tiny to read. Um, that's just going to piss off your users if they do extra work to get to your content. Speaking of usability, there are a lot of great uh, user interface, inter interface conventions, and those work for a reason. And uh, a website that has a good user interface is actually going to be more prof profitable for you. So bottom line is um, do your homework, get some referrals, hire a professional that you trust, and then actually listen to them. There is a reason that they're telling you not to put pink text on a purple background. Um, and they can explain it to you if you ask. <laughs> Um, really focus on content. Content is king. If you write a crappy blog post and throw 20 share links under it, guess what? Nobody's going to share it. Uh, if you create something that resonates with people, then nothing's going to stop them from sharing it, and you're going to have a successful site. 
Uh, thanks so much. I think we have 12 seconds for questions. <laughs>